Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalia Lee. I'm an indie author and full-time freelance editor. And today I thought I would do a little bit of like a finances, money type video. So on June 9th, Pistol Daisy officially turned one year old. And the week Pistol Daisy came out, I did a video uh, kind of breaking down how much I spent to publish Pistol Daisy. And then I gave you like a, you know, full number of this is how much money I had to spend in order to go from idea to published product that people can read. And now that it's been 12 months, I thought, well, maybe I can go ahead and do a little bit of a follow-up video and let you guys know if I made that money back, uh, how much money I have made off of Pistol Daisy, how many books I've sold, etc. Now, one of the reasons I feel very comfortable talking about this is because I don't feel like there should be any sort of competition within this world. I mean, we are all working really hard to write the best stories we can and to bring our characters to life in the best way we can. And uh, I don't want anybody to feel like they have to compare to how many books I've sold or to how much money I spent or to how much money I've made. But I think it is nice and can be helpful to kind of manage expectations. Now for a little bit of background, if you are new to the channel and you don't know about kind of my publishing journey, I have published four books. I published my very first book, Highborn, in 2014, my second book, Way of Spears, in 2016, and then I published my third book, Song of the Dryad, uh, in October of 2018. And that was the first book I published that I actually spent money on. For my first two books, I made the book covers myself. Um, I didn't hire an editor. I knew nothing about editors then. All I knew about self-publishing was what I had learned from Mandy Lynn, of course, and Jenna Moresi were the two author tours that I watched back then. So they definitely taught me about self-publishing, but I really didn't know how to self-publish like as a business model. So then in 2018, I had been on YouTube for a couple of years. I had grown a little bit more of a following, but more important than that is that I had learned how to self-publish better than I had in the past. So I have a video going over everything I spent on Song of the Dryad. I will link that down below. I will also link the video about how much I spent on Pistol Daisy if you want to see how I break it all down because I spent a very different amount of money on those two books. So definitely check those out if you're interested. Um, but Song of the Dryad was the first book that I like professionally self-published, I guess is what you could say, because I took it so seriously and I knew what I was doing that time around. So that was in 2018. So 2014, 2016, 2018. And then on June 9th, 2020, I published Pistol Daisy. So I really have a track record of one book every two years. And honestly, with the way things are going right now, it's going to seem, it kind of seems to me like Whiskey City will be coming out next year instead of this year. So it might be 2014, 16, 18, 20, and 22. But anyway, so that is a little bit of background. I have four books out. Um, you know, I have my YouTube channel, which is my kind of largest social media platform. That's how I engage with you guys apart from my Instagram. And I think on Instagram, I'm at like 6,000 followers, something like that. But I really focus on YouTube. So that's just something to take into consideration going into this. Something else to take into consideration, like I mentioned, is that I have not written a series. And based on what I've been told and what people, uh, you know, successful, really successful self-publishers have taught me here on YouTube is that having a series is really good for your business. And I can totally see why because if you get readers hooked on the first book, then there is a higher probability of them buying the second book, third book, fourth book, 20th book, etc. So if you can really hook that reader and provide them a really entertaining story, they wanna continue with that world and those characters, you have kind of a reader built in, right? And they're going to want to buy more books. And then something else you can do if you have a series, which I've never really been able to do, is maybe offer the first book for free so that you get people hooked. And then if you have, you know, four other books in the series, maybe you'll be able to sell all four of those books. Whereas if you hadn't offered the first book for free, they might not have bought it in the first place. And unfortunately, because I still do not have a series out, I have not been able to benefit off of that business model. And of course I have, uh, you know, I'm working on the third draft of Whiskey City. I guess I shouldn't say working. Um, I want to start working on the third draft of Whiskey City. I have a whole plan for getting back into that. 
you can uh, view that video down below as well, but I don't have a series out. So that's definitely affecting the number of books that I can sell. And another thing, <laughs> I have not been the best um, self-publisher in terms of how I handle my business, but I just write the story that, you know, I feel like I want to tell. So the other thing is that I did switch in 2020 from primarily fantasy fiction over to historical fiction. Pistol Daisy is like right on the border of young adult and new adult. It doesn't fit perfectly into either category, um, but it is like the Wild West told from the perspective of a young woman who's looking for revenge. So it's totally different from Song of the Dryad, which is focused on fairy mythology, uh, folklore. I did a lot of research on like Irish folklore, Celtic folklore, um, just so much research for Song of the Dryad to try to make that fantasy feel as uh, true to fairy tale and folklore as I could. But it's totally, it's in a totally different realm than uh, Pistol Daisy. And most people don't wanna do that for their business because if they're known as a fantasy writer, and those readers are looking for fantasy, they're going to keep returning for fantasy. So then if you suddenly throw in like a contemporary romance or a historical fiction, you might lose some of your readers. So I know that that wasn't the best business model, but I just really wanted to tell Daisy's story and I continue wanting to tell her story. So all of that was just kind of background on my publishing experience, I guess, and how how I have published my publishing business, self-publishing business, uh, et cetera. So I thought that would be important to mention because of course we are all in very different places and situations. We write in different genres. So that is something to take into consideration. So let's go ahead and get into the numbers. I ran all the numbers this morning. What are we gonna start with? So we're going to start with how much it costs to publish Pistol Daisy. So I say this in that other video, but again, if you want to see it all broken down, make sure to go check it out. I spent $598.95 to publish Pistol Daisy. So if we round it up for a nice clean number, I spent about $600 to publish that book, which was a lot, lot, lot cheaper than Song of the Dryad, but there were you know, some important reasons for that. Um, one being that the book was incredibly short, uh, but yeah, you can go check out my Song of the Dryad, uh, how much that cost too that'll all be below. So $598.95. Now the number of books that I had sold as of the end of May, because KDP hasn't given me all of my like June numbers. So we're just going to go through like May of 2021. So that was almost 12 months. So let's just again, round it up and say in a year, I sold 564 copies of Pistol Daisy. And to me, that's absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't hope for more. Like I am grateful for every single book sale. And what's super cool about this is that I've always been told and I've always heard that most self-published books, again, if we're kind of managing expectations, which is something that I really had to do when I first started publishing, most self-published books will never reach 100 sales. That's like a really, really big uh, goal or kind of benchmark to work toward is selling 100 books. So the fact that I have sold 564 copies of Pistol Daisy to me is absolutely amazing. Something else to mention is that Pistol Daisy is my first book to reach over 100 reviews on Amazon. That was also a really big goal that I wanted to attain and I was able to do so. I think right now it's sitting around 120 or 130 and I am grateful to everybody who has you know, picked up the book and especially even more so to those of you who picked up the book, read it, and then decided to leave a review because reviews are like lifeblood to self-publishing authors. They're really, really important to us and they help us a lot. So thank you to everybody who has written a review, whether that be on Amazon or Goodreads. I do think there are more reviews on Goodreads, but I'm focusing on Amazon primarily since that is where I sell the book. So that is where people who are buying my book are going to focus their attention, I think, in terms of reviews. So that's good to know. And the price of Pistol Daisy has varied over time. For example, uh, at the beginning of June, I did a 99 cent sale on the ebook uh, just to celebrate Pistol Daisy's birthday. But of course, those numbers are not being counted toward this total because this is only through May 2021. But the price has kind of changed and fluctuated. So I have made in about 12 months, uh, $1,454.07. So 
So what I'm going to do is actually tally up, you know, that number minus what I spent and I can tell you how much money I kind of made in profit. So after the like $598 that I spent to publish Pistol Daisy, I have made $855.12. So the fact that I made my money back, not only did I make my money back on Pistol Daisy, but I was able to make another $850 on top of that. That's amazing. You know, the fact that this thing that I'm passionate about and I just, you know, enjoy writing stories and sharing them with people, the fact that it could make money, even, you know, $850, is amazing and I'm really, really proud of that. But again, when managing expectations, I think it's important to take these things into consideration. I know when I was first, you know, starting to self-publish, I really thought like, oh, I could get rich doing this and you can. Some people do get rich doing this and they, you know, are able to make a full-time income, six figures, whatever it is on self-publishing books and you might be one of those people, but at this point, at least in my writer's journey and you know my book publishing business, I'm not quite at that point yet. So the fact that I was able to make $855 in profit to me is something that I'm really proud of and that I feel really good about. Um, I didn't pull specific numbers for the past few months, but in general, if we're just talking about kind of like how much money I'm making a month, not just on Pistol Daisy, but on all of my books, I'm usually in the range of about 20 to $50 a month. And $50 is a good month for me. It's probably a month where I've done a little bit of promotion, whether, you know, talking about my book here on my YouTube, which I don't really do much. I could definitely get better at that. Or talking about my book on Instagram, etc. I don't run any paid ads. Um, that's another thing to take into consideration. So I know that we could go much deeper into this topic but I just wanted to kind of come on here and chat about expectations, how much money I actually made. So I guess I just wanted to kind of pull back the curtain and show you guys the behind the scenes uh, financial side of publishing. I could do an entire video on how many of each book I have sold, how much money I have made off of each book and maybe dive a little bit deeper into why I think that is. And just kind of like picking apart the, again, kind of like business financial side of self-publishing. So if you're interested in that, let me know down below. I am kind of trying to ease my way back into AuthorTube. Um, it still feels a little bit like awkward to me to be sitting down and talking about books again because it has been a while. I, I usually just do vlogs or whatever, um, but I miss this world like I've talked about in a couple different videos now and I'm making an effort to come back because I wanna be here. So please do let me know if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you wanna know when a new video goes live. At this point, I think I'm going to switch back and forth between like an author tube video and then maybe a vlog or like van life content. We're not living on our van, um, but van life content. Uh, I wanna do an entire tour of our Sprinter van because we did get it back. It's absolutely gorgeous. The company did such a good job. Took them way longer than we thought it was going to, but it was well worth it. So I'm going to be doing an entire tour of our Sprinter van. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy that. So again, make sure to hit the little bell if you wanna be notified when that goes live. And as always, you can leave um, comments, questions, and suggestions for other videos in the comments down below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.